Hello and welcome everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2022. Nice to see um, some familiar faces up there today, um, as well as a, a new, some new names maybe perhaps. Um, we'll go ahead and we have a new year, but we'll go ahead and get started with our same um, disclaimer before jumping into our conversations today. You can't hear it, um, Tracy. Sorry for the glitch. I'm told that you couldn't hear that. So let me try that one more time. Okay. This presentation was produced under U.S. Department of Education contract number GS00F115CA with Synergy Enterprises, Inc. The views expressed herein do not necessarily represent the positions or policies of the U.S. Department of Education. No official endorsement by the U.S. Department of Education of any product, commodity, service, or enterprise mentioned herein is intended or should be inferred. All right. Thank you for bearing with me with that small technical glitch there. Um, welcome to your first talking circle of the of the new year for the uh, step the OIE step grant um, grant cohort. We'll begin today since it's a new, since a new year. We have it's been a few months since we've seen each other. We'll begin with some with a welcome and some celebrations, um, and then we'll do um, some program sharing with some round robin discussion, <clears throat> and after that we'll. Um, we'll share, we'll, we want to take some time today to get your input and about your thoughts about some um, upcoming technical assistance events, including the project directors meeting in this and upcoming in May. Um, and then we'll close as always uh, with some upcoming events, some um, things that you want to mark your calendar for and, and have on your radar. So um, I'm joined here today by, of course, our technical assistance team members who are here to support you if you have any technical difficulties and respond to questions in the chat, as well as your program officer from OIE, Ms. Shala Ortega. Welcome. All right, without further ado, like I said, it's a, it's a new year, it's 2022. We haven't talked in a while, so I thought we could go around the table today and um, say hello and share any, any notable program accomplishments or highlights or celebrations um, that you wanna lift up and share with your colleagues since, since we were last able to, to chat. Um, do I have any volunteers to, to say hello and go first? A volunteer. <laughs> Welcome, Carl. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. So the Connect tribe put in the step grant that they would start a charter school. And so we spent the last year doing quite a bit of work just involving stakeholders and building a, a charter school application. It's very, I mean, it was very comprehensive by 80 pages long. We started a, a academic policy committee and and updated the and, and the tribe actually gets to appoint some of the people on that on that governing board but to make a long story short that uh that was approved by the school board so we're moving forward with a tribal uh a tribal affiliated charter school k through 12. so we have a lot of work in front of us. Uh, the facility is probably going to be one of the biggest challenges, but but we're really, really excited. We made a lot of progress on that one. Huge milestone. Congratulations. Congratulations, Coral. This is Shala. When, when is the ribbon cutting uh, event? <laughs> well, the school doors should open in August 2022. Uh, we just met yesterday. We're trying to look at grants and other funding to start construction of a school. But I think in the meantime, we're just going to do uh, lease a facility that will meet the needs. And we're just starting our enrollment process to, to find out, you know, we had 250 people say they would send their kids to the school when we're going through that, you know, feasibility study and that whole that whole uh, kind of building up the momentum and engaging in the stakeholders. So uh, 
you know, we're hopeful we get a couple hundred folks uh, that will enroll their students. So it's going to depend on enrollment, what our budget is, and how much uh, lease facility we'll need. Also, within the charter application, we included a statewide correspondence school. So there's only one statewide correspondence school that's in this district and 20,000 students. Um, and that school's got 1,700 kids. It's the largest school in the school district. And, and there's several hundred Alaska Native American Indian students that attend the statewide correspondence school. Uh, and so we might get some of those students, but we're also hoping to serve some of the village students in the outlying areas of Alaska. So that was kind of a hard sell with the school district, but. But, you know, after a couple meetings with the school board, they, they went ahead and approved it. So we've got a K-12 brick and mortar school and a K-12 correspondence program embedded within the school. So ribbon cutting, August, 2022. <laughs> Congratulations on all that hard work. I know it's I know it's been a lot of a lot of investment from a lot of people to to make that happen. So congratulations. Thank you. Do you have anybody anybody else who wants to volunteer to go go next? We're just um, sharing a program accomplishment highlight or celebration. I know Carl let us off with a with a big big announcement about the approval of their of their charter school. This is Ken. I can. I, from Virginia, uh, haven't haven't. I didn't attend the last uh, talking circle meeting, but I'm trying to get back into the groove of things with this new year and with this pandemic still raging. Uh, I don't have anything near as significant as Carl has uh, has accomplished, but I would share. We are we've been working on a video project. We've been starting a video project here in Virginia as part of our professional development for teachers. And yesterday we had uh, our first filming. Uh, we interviewed four tribal citizens uh, uh, from around the from the Chickahominy tribe in Virginia, and uh, uh, I was part of the interview process. So. For us, uh, we're hoping that this video that we produce will be a uh, significant professional development for teachers and educators. We plan to share it with uh, the seven federally recognized tribes in Virginia, plus all of the local LEAs that we are having agreements with. Plus, we will we'll be sharing this with the Virginia Department of Education as part of our relationship with the Commonwealth of Virginia. So not no anywhere near as large as Carl's, but still for us, it's a big step to get this uh, project rolling as far as this video. Uh, we've been planning for it for several months now, and we we're finally able to get the first pieces in place. So that's basically what I wanted to share. I know, I know a charter school feels it feels hard hard to top, but I but I know those video projects also take a lot of a lot of investment as well. And and such a cool resource to have too. Did you you said you interviewed elders? We interviewed four people. We're we're just interviewing people across the uh, generational scale here, elders, youth, and uh, those in between. Uh, so uh, we had a combination of that yesterday, and we're going to continue with that with the. Uh, uh, several other tribal locations. How cool. And that's going to be a, become a part of that um, um, professional development package that you've been developing with um, ACT. Is that right? Yes. Yes. ACT. Yes. Okay. That's been a, a, a positive uh, step for us with ACT. Great. Thanks, Ken. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? This is Allison from Blue Lake Rancheria. Happy New Year, Allison. Happy New Year to everyone. I agree. I wanted to um, let you know we we have nothing as significant as Carl because that is fantastic, <laughs> Carl. But we did make some headway at at better communication with the state of California, which was a major has been a major uh, kink in everything. 
And through our efforts, through our various programs, trying to build this modern youth internship academy with the culturally adapted curriculum, a lot of people became interested in that curriculum concept. Um, and through that work, we worked with the Humboldt County Office of Education, several other tribes, and the universe, Humboldt State University to submit an application to the state of California to write the Ethnic Studies Native American curriculum for the state. So the state has that application under consideration right now, and we'll find out by the end of January. But if we, if we get this, then the curriculum that we're developing will go statewide. So that, while it's not, it's a part of the whole state tribal educational partnership concept of building our capacity and building LEA's capacity, and it's a part of our Modern Youth Internship Academy's goal, it just, it grew out of this trying to solve the issue that we've been having, that the state wasn't working with tribes and we weren't seeing tribal cultures reflected in state curriculum. And so I'm happy about that. What If we don't get it and, and the state uh, and San Diego County gets it with the, the Morongo Band tribe, we'll be happy that at least our work led to the state adopting curriculum that tribes are developing. So that's what I'm excited about. That's really exciting, that possibility. And I know you've been putting a lot of work into defining these these as well. I hope that um, when we dive a little deeper into our program sharing, we can talk um, even more about some of the, some of the partnerships and and how those are evolving for for all of you there. Um, thank you, thank you. So. Um, I know we've had most of the programs share on here, but we have um, we have some names maybe that, that join us intermittently. So I'm wondering if we just want to continue to continue to go around the table and say hello. And if you have something to a program highlight that you want to share, go go ahead. But um, otherwise, we'll just we'll, we'll say hello and, and welcome and let us and let us know which project you're joining you're joining us from. Um, Maybe over to John. You're next. You're next. Um, next to me on my on my screen. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm John, with the Mashpee Wampanoag Tribe in Massachusetts. Did Tali? I got on late. So did Tali already talk about what we're doing? No. No. no okay. Yet. So <laughs> I can say a couple <laughs> things. Uh, I'm going to have right. to jump off actually in 20 minutes because I have an IEP meeting to go to for one of our kids. But um, we're similar to what's been said. We're, we're working with um the school districts to come up with some curriculum and, and there's a Native American course that we've found hasn't really been researched very well. So we're we're trying to work with them on that. And it, it would be great to do um, like uh, Blue Lake Rancher Ears doing, you know, if we get that to the state level, we have been working with the state on other ways to add to the state learning standards. So I'm, I'm hoping to go out to California in, in spring to, to meet up with the Blue Lake folks. So maybe I can get some ideas too about how they're doing that. Well, I'm glad you're able to join us and thank you. What a great connection to make with yeah. your fellow colleagues. Yeah. Talia, did you want to add anything? Oh, go ahead. Because um, I'm with the Mashu Wampanoag tribe as well. My name is Talia Landry. This is actually the first um, step talking stick meeting that I've attended. I was hired back in September um, as a communications coordinator. So um, I've been getting really delved into the program with um, my position in that. And to carry on with what John was saying, um, we are in the midst of developing um, cur uh, yeah, curriculum with a Native American history course in our towns, the public school system in the town. But we actually last semester successfully helped um correlate some curriculum with a found with a, a district over from us and within their social justice history or social justice course um for their high school class and so that was exciting and we were going to continue with that relationship and within their history department to see what other courses that we're going to assist with Such an interesting uh, curriculum co connection to to make. Such an interesting topic area, and 
entry point. Yeah, we were really able to give some um, local social justice issues involving the tribe to incorporate within their course that helped them really localize um, some of the things that they were talking about on a national scale as well. Thank you both for sharing. And then we have Cameron with us today. Yeah, hello, my name is Cameron Greenview. Um, I work for the Mastery Wampanoag Tribal Step Grant. Um, I'm the manager of the grant. Um, I agree with everything that everyone's saying. And um, we have had a, a few accomplishments here and there as far as professional development, uh, little bits here and there for our local schools. Um, we also had, John also did a, uh, an internship through um, the National Seashore here. He actually um, helped out with that. And we got some students in through that program, um, some tribal students. And other highlights, um, we did have a yeah, professional development um, program this past summer with local educators um, learning about the um, learning about the local tribe, Mashpee Wampanoag tribe. So we had some, um, uh, how do you want to say, some culture keepers and also some representatives of the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe um, do, do some presentations for our local educators. Excellent. Mashpee is representing today. I'm so glad you're all able to join us Join us here today. Happy New Year. And then I have Lisa on my, on my screen. Welcome, Lisa. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I had some connectivity issues. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. Um, so my name is Lisa K. Hoffman. I'm the Career Readiness Education Coordinator for the Blue Lake Rancheria Tribal Education Agency. And uh, at this time, we are actively recruiting 24 Native American persons to become credentialed teachers uh, through our program, um, working with uh, various entities, whether it's the school district or um, ITEP or Native American Pathways, or College of the Redwoods, et cetera. Uh, we are pulling our resources together for the best ways uh, for the recruitment. So that's where we are right now with that. Lots of partnerships going on there. Yes. Building on what Lisa said for the partnerships, I wanted to, I just remembered this. Um, we have finally worked with Humboldt State University on a, basically it's like a 101 level class for our students, whereby they will take the class at their high school um, with the university and receive credit at the university and at the high school. And we're tying that into an internship. So our first class that we have the syllabus for and we got that all arranged is the natural resources, one of our industry clusters, natural resource industry cluster. And that we're hoping um, we've got an agreement with Hog Island Oyster Farm and our students are going to uh, take the class and then have an internship at the oyster farm. So that's at least one of the partnerships we've just recently established like a week and a half ago. <laughs> Brand new. Cool. So that your the idea is that there be a 101 class for all these different pathways that you're identifying? Yes, that way they get high school credit as well as college credit and the college credit they get goes towards meeting their uh, GE requirements. So when they they take that career pathway into college, um, they've already completed some of their GE requirements and, and they're just that much step ahead besides having the actual experience in the workplace so that they can they can see what it's like and get an experience in the college realm and go do i want to go for your degree at the same time mm -hmm. learning and actually doing the job and going do i want to go vocational and not get a four-year degree so it's it's uh offering them the opportunity to experience both very cool and congratulations on the new partnership i know that is always under under development it's it was I, I have to say speaking to the other people on here one of the hardest things i found is that partnership and the teacher recruitment portion for it um i'm having a hard time trying to get teachers recruited right now lisa and i are trying our best but a lot of people are very 
tentative about he- heading into the education field right now. The, mm. the climate has not, not been the greatest. Um, with regards to the internship, a lot of people are like, I don't know about having kids under 18 in this area and blah, blah, blah. So we're having to be very careful in writing the job descriptions for the internship. But as long as we meet everybody's needs, we're, we're it's, it's taking a long time in negotiation and like 15th draft, <laughs> I mean, draft 15 of this or that, it's taken a long time, but it's, it's, it's working. It's finally getting. Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Well, there's so much good work going on out there and we're so much to celebrate and, you know, it just even even in the last few days and weeks and months. So congratulations for all, all that you've been able to do in spite of all the challenges that we've been facing in the in the past couple of years, especially. Before we get into some deeper sharing, I just wanted to share, um, put a visual in in front of you with um, some key events and um, benchmarks along the way of our our grant project year. Um, That new project year, uh, new grant year, excuse me, started in October of last year. Um, You all have submitted some um, annual performance reporting updates as well as budget updates around November. Um, and now we're in that little stretch of, of time, right, where we have, um, we're, we're, it's before the spring reporting um, updates are, are submitted. Um, we have a, another stretch of, a further stretch of time before our project directors meeting. So like, you know, with the coming of the new year, it's a great time to sort of reflect, reset, um, reset for what remains of the school year, school year, as well as the, the grant project year, and think about what, what you need to set yourself, your staff, your programs, your partnerships up for success before that next round of annual performance reporting. So with all this in mind, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. With all this in mind, um, we do have some discussion prompts um, to guide our sharing. Um, using the round robin process that that we've been using where we go around and let everyone an opportunity to share on a topic. Uh, Then we'll go around again and everyone has opportunity to ask follow-up questions or to share further if if something was um, queued up for them during the first round of sharing. And then we typically fall very naturally into that third round of open discussion um, and and responding to, to questions. But the, f- the three questions that I have up, up there on the screen right now are, are all pretty meaty, and we've sort of touched on a couple of them, but I'm wondering if we want to start with, with one of these rather than tackle all three in the same round. Is there any of these questions there under, listed under round one that feels more um, pertinent, more top of mind, more topical that you'd like to attack um, first? We can make, of course, make time for all of them. Um, but I'm wondering if there's one that feels like this group wants to wants to go after first. We have a question about the status of your partnerships and agreements. We started digging into that a little bit, so maybe that's top of mind. Um, how are you measuring and collecting data about capacity building? And this that ties to one of your GEPR measures that I know you you report on regularly. Um, around capacity building activities, the the measure asks for the number of activities, but I'm interested in hearing from you a little bit more about how you're um, thinking about capacity and how you're defining defining that for your programs. Um, and then maybe this one maybe this one is what more of what you want to talk about today. Um, what are some short term goals or objectives that you're currently focused on? And again, we started touching on some of that. Um, any, anybody have some input on where they'd like to start the conversation today? I can address the round one. Um, how are you measuring and collecting data about capacity building? I am keeping track of how many meetings I'm having with our parent advisory councils and our partners. And then um, what when we are working on a joint something like an agreement or data sharing or whatever we're working on, I'm keeping track of um, how far we're getting. Like, uh, do we have a signed agreement? How many drafts did we go through? Um, are we 
do we have the policies in place to do the next thing on this next program? Meaning like, we'd like to start implementing this program. Do we have the policies in place to be able to do it? Do we have the forms in place? Do we have the structure in place? And so it's a lot of lists, to be quite honest, how I'm, how I'm keeping track and measuring, just a lot of lists. Does that sound good to the group? We can start. We can start our sharing with around this idea of pro, um, measuring and collecting data about program about capacity building. I can. This is Ken again. I can talk somewhat about uh, measuring data, uh, but I would like to share uh, the first item. Some information about the first item: the status of partnerships, uh, partnerships and agreements. Uh, of course, here in Virginia, we're, I'm working with uh, seven different tribes, so I have to look at seven different locales, but agreements in those uh, individual locales. We, as uh, the Virginia Tribal Education Consortium, is actually we have actually in, in place partnership agreements, specific uh, documented partnership agreements with uh, three uh, school districts. Uh, at this time, we have a plan in the upcoming year to uh, build agreements with several more school districts. And in our third year, we're gonna be probably uh, reaching out across the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia and, and connect with as many school districts as we possibly can. But these agreements are already uh, uh, they're, uh, providing some fruit. We've been invited to some of the school board meetings uh, um, you know, that might be uh, a little bit of an issue <laughs> when you go to some of these school board meetings these days, depending on what's really going on. But we've been invited uh, to do that. And uh, the agreements that we have in place uh, are, are just the folks that are working with us in the local education districts are just as excited about the agreements as the Virginia Tribal Education Consortium is so it's a it's a it's it's a it's a these agreements are mutually uh, positive as we move as we go along. Uh, at the, the, uh, we have some amazing uh, amazing uh, conversations with some of the people from the from the different districts, uh, and you know as far as capacity building, we're constantly. Uh, measuring and collecting data, but where we are and this capacity building piece, of course, uh, requires us here in, uh, in Virginia to reach out to several different school districts, the school districts where each of the seven tribes reside. So uh, uh, that's very positive for us. Uh, and like I said, some of our goals are to uh, reach many more districts this calendar year and across the entire Commonwealth in uh, the third uh, uh, fiscal year of the grant. Thank you, I hope Ken. that makes sense. <laughs> yes, thank you, Ken. Um, Carl or um, anyone from, from Mashpee, do you wanna share on this idea of um, um, measuring and collecting data around capacity building and, and or partnerships and agreements? Um, this is Carl. So we have, we're kind of fortunate. It's just one big school district that kind of is the same, almost the same borders as the tribe. So we're working with one school district and, and the way that we're kind of collecting the data on it is the number of capacity building activities, the topics, and, and Basically, that's it. We have the ability to dig in a little bit deeper. We've done some professional development with counselors and, and some principals, and we've got three more sessions of professional development uh, coming up this spring. And we just have them in a huge conference room, 50 or 60 people at a time, and just work with the federal programs director and their staff to bring in um, folks that, and they're kind of managing who they bring in first. And we ask for the counselors because they can be kind of gatekeepers for kids and gate openers for kids. So 
I think next will be a mix of principals and, and teachers at the high school level. Uh, social studies, especially, is one of our targets to, to bring in and just and 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 just talk about culturally responsive teaching and cultural sustaining education. And, and most of the capacity building is just a few hours long, but we have the ability to dig deeper into the data: uh, how many attended, how long they attended, uh, and and that sort of thing. But for right now, we're just keeping the broad data. Uh, but we, I mean, we have the ability to, they, we keep sign in sheets and there's actually an electronic system for professional development and our partnership with the school district, they're posting those on and people sign up electronically. So we can, uh, they have a professional development database that's, a, that's online that people use. So we, we can dig in. But that's basically how we're collecting data. And then, and then when we do the stakeholder meetings and that sort of thing for the charter school and work-based learning, we're just keeping track of those meetings as we go, the topics and the attendees and that sort of thing. Thanks, Carl. <clears throat> Excuse me. How about the Mashpee team? Anybody want to chime in here? Yeah. Hi, this is Cameron again. Um, so our partnership partnerships is... Um, it's going pretty well with Mashpee. We do have access to um, a lot of teachers and a lot of faculty uh, work with the principals, uh, vice principal. And also we have uh, have worked with and also educated some of the score, school board members as well, um, school committee members. So it's a great partnership that we have with Mashpee. We are also have one with Falmouth, which is a, a district over. And we're working on a couple other ones with um, that are a little farther away from us. But um, just considering where all of our native students are, it's pretty spread out. So we're trying to get uh, a presence in the school districts that we know our kids are at. Um, the measuring and collecting data um, about capacity building is based on um, the events and um, also the, the educators that are there. And again, we're working right on with faculty. Um, with the school board, they're also a school committee, I'm sorry, and also with um, the guidance counselors as well. So there's a lot of professional development and building capacity on that and um, working that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did anybody else want to want to chime in? I know we've we've got the programs represented, but we've got other folks here that might want to add on what their colleagues shared. This is Allison from Blue Lake. Uh, I just I also wanted to share on the capacity building in our partnerships through our partnership with Humboldt um, with the Humboldt County Office of Education. They are providing us access to organizations uh, that we wouldn't have access to because we don't qualify, like the Small School District Association in California. And through our association with them, I will be attending as well as eight teachers, eight Native American teachers from school districts in our service area will be attending their conference in March to help bring back strategies for the implementation of our programs in our, our small school districts. So that's a capacity building. I, I, I guess I'm going to count that as data collection <laughs> where the LEA is helping us to build capacity and then we go in taking that and putting it back into the other LEAs. Great. How about we move through our to our second, the second round then, and I'm going to give each of each program an opportunity to follow up and ask any questions or respond to what they've heard from their colleagues. One question, well, one, one reflection as I was listening um, that, I, that I was hearing, um, we're, all, we're all tracking 
certain tangible things, right? Um, the, the, the activities, the policies that, that, good in, that get put into place, um, the topics, um, attendance at the, the events that, that, that are held. And capacity building always happens <clears throat> towards a greater goal, right? Um, towards um, a, a more collective or, or bigger um, vision, perhaps, is a way to think about it. And as I was listening, I heard people talk about um, more effective practices or more effective use of resources, um, strengthening and, and growing individual skills of, of teachers, perhaps, or groups of teachers, um, or even developing a shared um, understand a shared understanding of, of certain um, certain um, of how to how to use um, data or how to use um, different funding programs or a shared vision for what you'd like to accomplish like a like a charter school or like a, um, a career pathways um, program um, those that's a big picture thing, right? So we're counting, counting, looking at these little things, and I'm wondering if they're, if you, how you're thinking, of, how you're thinking about those, those big picture things, and um, may, may if you're, if you feel like you're making progress, that like, it does your, does the information you have show that you're making progress towards those bigger, bigger goals? I would I would say yes I can our 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 big goal is to have a cradle cradle to career tribal education agency that goes from early childhood all the way through graduating from college and we started with nothing and now we have multiple programs that are blossoming everywhere um in all the different levels and I can look at just our strategic planning documents and we went from a spreadsheet with a few ideas to, you know, we're working on a 51 page strategic plan <laughs> and all the policies that we have in place and that we can respond to the needs. Someone contacts me and I go, do we have a policy for that? I do. I didn't have that before. So I can, I can see very tangible results just in the functioning of communication between other school districts and partners and tribes. So yes, I, I can see that the overall big goal is happening. I think it's happening a lot slower than I had hoped it would, but I, I, I couldn't account for the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair, totally fair. Uh, actually, to, to piggyback what Allie was just talking about, this is Lisa with Blue Lake Rancheria Tribal Education Agency. Um, one of the biggest things recently, I don't know if she had mentioned, is our partnership with uh, Eureka City Schools, which has been fantastic to open up uh, the possibilities um, and you know having them be aware of the Modern Youth Internship Academy. So um, it's, it's really exciting to see these uh, cradle to career developments. So just wanted to chime that in. And I would follow that up with saying that that, wouldn't, that partnership with Eureka City Schools would not have happened had we not started the, the program to open this uh, regional occupational training center and workforce development center. And with the help of Humboldt County Office of Ed, our main LEA that's been helping us, and them recruiting Northern Humboldt Union High School District, and then them recruiting Tr Klamath Trinity Union High School District, and we would not we would not be able to grow without those partnerships. And I, I have to give it to them and what we've learned from them with, you know, people will join you if you have structure. If you can show them you have structure and that you have reliable, because that's the other thing is structure and reliable. And as we've been able to build our structure and be more reliable, we're able to bring more partnerships to bring in people to meet our goals. And so and it gives us more credibility as well. And, and partnerships with partnerships. I mean, with the two new entities that I have reached out with, uh, with ITEP and uh, Native American Pathways uh, through the district, um, it's been great knowing, uh, you know, having these partnerships beforehand, uh, you know, based on their suggestions. So, very exciting. And I've, and, I think these are all really good, really good examples of how um, 
like the strategic plan, for example, it did not exist before and now it does. And while we don't think of that necessarily as data, that is, um, it is information, right? It is um, um, an indicator of success. That's something, you know, you've had the conversation, even the partnership agreements, um, several of you have talked um, talked about establishing partnership agreements where perhaps there wasn't anything anything before. It's another um, data point or indicator, right, that you've made progress towards that greater capacity goal of um, building a shared vision or strengthening um, community resource and collaboration. I would say one thing that we, we learned through this process is uh, approaching it with an asset-based community mm -hmm. development mindset in order to recruit partners into our association, the Consortium for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. And um, we, going in there and saying, we value this about your organization. And here's something we think in our organization, in our our consortium that you can value and that our two things work together towards this same goal that we share and then they go oh we didn't realize you had that what's your structure how's your plan and then we can go here's our plan here's our structure and since we started this we've like i said we've recruited college of the redwoods and eureka city schools and klamath joint trinity school district in the last year and a half so that to me, those are three main partners that are going to make this work for us. Now it's the business partners. We've got two business partners we've recruited for internships, and now we need to recruit more. So as you build, um, showing the partners, hey, we're building, hey, we're, we're doing this, and then putting it out there, I can't believe how much our Facebook page has really helped us. And I, I would say this to people who don't, who may not have marketing budgets or what Facebook is very cheap to operate and you can, you can get out there and do it. And we've been recruiting people have heard about us because of it and say, Hey, I heard about your program. I'd like to get us involved. And that's how we've been growing as well. Great tip. <clears throat> what questions do you have for each other? I have either around partnerships, agreements, or measuring and collecting data about capacity building. Are there any challenges that maybe that you've been turning mulling over in either of those areas that you want to kind of share with the group and do some brainstorming around it's good to hear from allison about the work-based learning and uh, internships and things and we're just you know we're, we're kind of running into the covid issue with especially now with omicron and and alaska is now peaking again and it's cases like many other states. And so uh, trying to place students in businesses and develop those partnerships. We have a lot of the infrastructure kind of built and, and we don't have written agreements with uh, too many organizations yet. So that's kind of been a difficult one for us, but we put so much time and energy into the charter school uh, just this work-based learning and just with COVID, we've just kind of just been kind of dipping our toe in the water with that one. And we really need to really move forward on that. And I'm hopeful that the Omicron thing runs its course and we can kind of get back to normal in-person meetings and in-person visits to work workplaces and really start to develop that. The school district has an interest in work-based learning. They don't have a dedicated work-based learning coordinator. So we're working uh, with the school district CTE director to try to develop a partnership in that respect so that uh, we're just working hand in hand with the students that are enrolled in the school district and getting them placed for, uh, you know, job shadowing and pre-internships and pre-apprenticeships and that sort of thing. I'm still working through that whole process. So it's good to hear all the progress that other folks are making on that. 
hey Carl, when you're headed down that road of the internships, uh, we ran into a few snags and I want to let you know about them. Um, some school districts are one, one of the main ones we work with. They have a requirement for a student to maintain a certain GPA or they won't issue the work permit. And um, some of our students, you know, they have grades that are not the most fantastic and they met them one semester and then they didn't meet them the next. And so their year long internship had to be interrupted because of it. So that mm -hmm. that's something um, what we've looked at now is we're going to have to get more progress reports during the year on those students in the mm -hmm. internships to see if their grades start slipping and then provide them with complementary mentoring and or tutoring in the areas that they're finding slippage of mm -hmm. their grades so they can maintain the, the proper GPA to maintain their work permit to maintain their internship. That was one thing that we weren't prepared for and it just slammed us right in the middle of the program and it was like, oh no. So keep your eye on, on that. The mm -hmm. other thing that totally blew us away is that uh, some of our internships were technological in nature, the graphic arts and technology internship. And we thought, oh, this is a technology internship. The kids will know a lot about computers. They'll understand email. And you would not believe here we have, you know, 10th grade, 11th grade students that didn't check their email regularly and, and weren't following through on things because it was all email related. And mm -hmm. so we We've looked into and we've partnered with the Yurok tribe and we've got what we call a job coach now through their NISEP grant and they're working with our students so we've kind of pooled our efforts mm -hmm. and so a job coach might be something you want to think about particularly for those interns because they might not they don't know what it is to work and what is expected and not every job place that you're placing them has had an intern before to teach them how to be a, a worker. Most people hire somebody that they've had a job before they understand what it means to have a job. Mm -hmm. So we, we're doing a prep on the other side with the, the people that we've recruited from Hogs Island and from Fox Farms and from um, California uh, National uh, California State Parks where our interns are at right now. We've recruited them to help us create this is what you need to know about working in a job like your first day on the job, your first week, here's what, here's job culture, like a job culture mm -hmm. coach. And that's just started this semester. So just when you start getting into that, you're going to come up with some weird snags. And those are the two that we came up with. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it. That's really helpful. Yeah, thank you. So Ken or Kara or Cameron or Talia, any any questions or comments you want to add? I just wanted to add that I really enjoyed hearing about that kind of job culture coach or mentorship. I think that's a great idea. I'm over here writing that idea down now. <laughs> <laughs> If you need uh, any any information on that, uh, we are working with her name is Shauna Edwards. She's okay. a member of she's a member of the Potawatomi Band in mm -hmm. Kansas, but she lives out here in California, and she's the HR director of Fox Farms here in Arcata. So she's an HR director. She's Native American, and she works in the agricultural and natural resources industry cluster with our internships. And she is going to be doing. Um, like these courses, like a, like a two hour prep with the students that are going into interns. And she'll go over, here's everything you need to know about working, you know, like sexual harassment law. Kids play a lot of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be quite honest, they, they, they do lewd things at school that they should, they, you could not do at a workplace because it would be considered sexual harassment. And we had one of those things happen with one of our interns and we were like, oh boy, you know, they need to know that they can't talk that way or do certain things that might be considered sexual harassment in the workplace. So that's what I'm talking about job coach wise. Um, and you think that a lot of workplaces would naturally have that, you know, welcome to the workplace. Here's the laws that you need to buy. But some places don't there because we have really small businesses that we're trying to place our kids in. So, yeah, uh, Kara, let me know if you want her number and I'll hook you up with Shauna Edwards. Awesome. Thank you so much. Anyone else there? It's 
So maybe we could take <clears throat> just a few a few minutes here um, and tackle that that third the third question there in our list of um, discussion prompts. What are some short term goals and objectives that you're currently focused on? So uh, for Connect Tribe, you know, just related to the charter school, we're we're doing a pre enrollment. Uh, questionnaire or survey to get out so we can get the, the names and grade levels for students that are interested into the cult, cultural charter school. Um, we need to establish at least a baseline of enrollment so we can start on our budget and facilities and yeah, that sort of thing. We're working on a, a web page and we should be able to launch it by the end of next week. It's connectculturalschool.org. Uh, and also a Facebook page and, and with frequently asked questions is already up under Connect Cultural School on Facebook. So check it out, like the page. And so those things are kind of in the works and just continuing to have uh, the, the governing body and keeping them up to date, getting their input, getting their direction with some of the things that we're doing. Uh, we're having meetings every two weeks now. Hopefully at some point it'll be once a month again, but it's going to be a while before we get back to that because we have to keep our stakeholders engaged and our leadership engaged along the way. Um, and we're also doing a survey, a Google survey on cultural activities that they would like to see the school emphasize and we're breaking it down into uh, you know, like a yearly or annual subsistence activity calendar. So there's certain activities that you do in March and May, June and July as within the tribes in Alaska. And so, and the, and the separate groups within Alaska, you know, the Yupiks and the Inupaks and the Clinkett, High Simpson, all those different, we represent, you know, our district represents uh, all those different groups uh, attend school within our district. So. So just trying to engage all those folks in developing uh, cultural learning activities that will go, you know, integrate well with academic learning. So those are some of the things that were short term and long term. So developing the curriculum, but also keeping the stakeholders engaged and trying to keep the interest level high and hopefully the enrollment level high. So that, that's it for on that one. But there's, you know, there's some things with work-based learning and we we have our, I think it's two weeks from now, we have our uh, cultural sustaining practices, uh, professional development coming up with the school district. Very cool, just, just a little, just a few things. <laughs> Very good, excellent. Um, how about the team from Mashpee? Short-term goals and objectives you're currently working on. Yeah, hello. Um, again, this is Cameron. And um, so right now, the short-term goals, um, we really have a lot of access into the this Native American history course and also the history department at our Mashpee schools. So um, we're really trying to get um, our own curriculum in there as far as having our, um, our educators in and working with uh, the public school educators and uh, having the proper presentation of uh, Mashpee Wampanoag history and local Northeastern history of Native American students. And, and also just to really, those are the short term goals right at the moment. Uh, other things coming up is obviously more uh, professional development for our staff, I'm not staff, I'm sorry, um, Mashpee faculty and um, the teachers and also the school committee members on um, on the local um, tribe, Mashpee Wampanoag. And um, I also have to say that the pandemic has hit us again. Um, I know you guys are probably going through the same thing. So working from home again is something I'm not getting used to all of a sudden. Um, I do have five kids, so they're always running around and I, my wife is home. So then she's looking at me all weird if I'm on a meeting and not doing something. So it's, it's something that's really, I'm trying to get used to again, I really don't want to. I'd rather be out there working with people directly 
um, communication dialogue is always great. And, and I'll, it's also more motivating for me um, in doing the stuff that I want, um, considering the step guidelines. Um, but yeah, and so this is um, something new to get used to again, working from home. Um, but I'm, we're pulling through over here. Thank you. Um, yeah, and just to add to what Cam was saying, uh, working from home is definitely something that I'm going to have to get used to <laughs> with this um, grant, trying to create the partnerships and really like um, connect with the teachers when we're providing these pro professional development days. Um, but mm -hmm. also to add to that is that we recently this morning, um, because we did have a meeting with um, faculty at Mashpee that exposed a, a assignment that actually was um, Harm, not harmful, it was ignorant because uh, to our Native American students, the assignment. So we got to address the assignment and see where in their curriculum of the, the Ma Massachusetts standards that that was brought into. And we were able to um, make the connection to, um, put to, to now schedule the professional development day with curriculum that can supplement that, that will help, you know, have, bring the Native perspective to the mass standards of what is the European perspective, which will allow a better facilitation when um, educating the students. And so I think that was a, um, a really good um, short-term goal that we just got put on this morning. So they're learning about the 13 colonies and that's obviously the, the European perspective. So we offered to provide a professional development day on the Wabanaki territory. So then they can learn about, you know, the territory that was here before the 13 the colonies were established. And that's something that they could supplement before introducing that content in their course. So that's just one other um, short-term goal that we just put on our agenda. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you for sharing that. Uh, VTech, how about Ken or Kara? Great day, I was talking Please. and I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I, I got it, Ken. Uh, I can take over this one since I heard you answer the first one. Um, but yeah, just kind of piggybacking off of what Ken said earlier, um, we are set out to work with almost every school district in Virginia by the end of this grant. So right now, our biggest task <laughs> is getting those partnership agreements with uh, our school systems in Virginia. So for year two. Uh, we've almost completed our goal of getting, I believe it was seven for this year, uh, seven different or seven additional, excuse me, school systems in the state of Virginia. I've got about two superintendents that I'm trying to get on my calendar. It's just been a huge mess trying to get uh, our schedules coordinated. But so far, all the superintendents that we've worked uh, with and reached out to, they've been so supportive and very excited about our partnerships. So that's been our biggest piece of work is just getting in touch with superintendents and getting calendars on the uh, schedule or getting meetings, excuse me, meetings on our calendars and get those schedules aligned. Um, I've also been creating professional development for our teachers. Uh, we are doing a revamp of the pilot professional development that we did last year. We got a school system to get a select group of social studies teachers to really look at the professional development that was put together as it relates to Virginia native language, culture, and history. Uh, so far, it's been some incredible feedback. Very excited that the teachers are excited. Um, I mean, myself, I was kind of nervous putting that out there. I went from a teacher attending professional development to somebody creating professional development. So it was a little nerve wracking at first, but the information has been incredible. Uh, I had an assistant superintendent who told me she learned so much from the uh, modules that we put together. So we're very excited to just build on what we've already created. I think we created a very strong foundation. Uh, one of the biggest things that teachers have enjoyed is we created some model units. So we're giving teachers some recommended mm -hmm. websites and books for them to utilize and in Virginia, grade three and grade 12 do not have any history SOLs related to Native Americans. So we took some of the reading SOLs and showed how easy it could be to make a cross-curricular 
lesson to utilize these books and these websites and make it a English lesson, but they're still getting that historical content in there. Um, I was a special education teacher. So cross-curricular is just my world. So it's like, hey, let me show y'all how easy this can be. So we gave them that model lesson uh, and the feedback was that teachers want more. So we're hoping to add some additional model units onto what we already have. Um, and we are going to go ahead and give these our brainstorm right now is that since a lot of school districts no longer recognize Columbus Day, but Indigenous Peoples Day, we're giving them these lessons and these grade level books to say, okay, we know you don't have a whole week or two weeks to spend on this lesson, but let's just give you a one day, just a quick 30 minute or a two day. So two 30 minute lessons. Um, but again, kind of looking at those English SOLs to make sure they're still getting that content because you know we got to make sure we're aligning with our state requirements. So uh, just giving them those model units. And lastly, another big thing I've been working on is partnering with ACT and making sure uh, schools are ready and supported for the work keys programming that we are hoping to bring into all of the districts that we are working with. So we've had kind of a slow start on that uh, just because the work keys program was so new to all of us here at VTech. So it was very interesting to learn about. Um, so right now I've just, I've been reaching out to so many people from ACT for additional support and they've been so incredible walking me through that program and really helping me understand what schools need kind of that foundation to be successful for students to have work keys. So those are our three big things we've been going on right now. <laughs> Thank you for that. And and Blue Lake, Allison, or, or um, Lisa, I don't think we've heard from you on this last question. Well, I was just, I mean, Kara, I love what you're doing. Oh my God. I mean, seriously, the Work Keys program, we were looking into that too. Like you were just like going down my list of things. Like, oh my God, she's doing that. I want to I want to get on just a meeting with you and I want to pick your brain all about sure. Work Keys. I'm oh going to go God. ahead and put my uh, email in the chat for y'all. Definitely reach out to me and we can get something scheduled. I Fantastic. definitely would be interested. Yeah. Oh, thank sure. you. <laughs> That's great. And and I love that you are creating curriculum to replace the stuff that needs to be replaced. We've been trying to, to get that and doing that. We do have nine different tribes that want input <laughs> on that. So that's been a little little challenging, but yes, yeah, something to replace Columbus Day. That was, that's, I would love to see what you guys put together on that. That would be fantastic too. Our short-term goal right now, real short-term, is we need to move all of our TEA website stuff off of the tribe's main page because we're drawing so much traffic, it's slowing down the website. So, because we have lots of videos and things like that and the curriculum and downloads. And so we actually are opening a whole entire separate website from the tribe so that we have our own domain name and everything. And that's what my short-term goal is, is by the end of this semester, I've got to get everything moved so we can start uploading the rest of the curriculum because we're, we're dragging the tribe's website down. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's my, my main goal right now. That's what I'm really super focused on. Um, and I pretty much, Lisa, what are you focused on? Michael. Shoot, I wasn't able to, can you hear me now? Okay, sorry about that. Um, what I'm focused on right now is working with our partners in terms of uh, recruitment strategies, whether it's the school districts or uh, other partnerships or businesses, um, trying to come up with the best uh, culturally appropriate practices. Uh, and in terms of also, I've been learning a lot about uh, graphics in terms of what would be appropriate, uh, eye-catching and, um, and culturally relevant. So it's, um, working on that and also, uh, you know, keeping track of, um, I think it's GEPRA too, in terms of keeping track of those measures as well. So I've also been updating the step tracker in terms of um, professional development um, meetings and also um, cert certifications required for our programs. Just a few things. <laughs> 
Anybody have follow-up questions for each other? I love that, that you're able to make some connections and already planning to follow up, but anything you wanna ask each other here while we're all together? So many great things happening in all of your in all of your programs. I really appreciate all the sharing and, and that you've that you've had. I have a million questions. I wish I could take up the, the rest of the, the time and 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 ask you all the questions, but it's not about me. <laughs> it's really about you. Um, in our the, the final discussion or sharing that we that we want to put up here for us today is to really get your input and ideas about some top of mind concerns or um, topics, um, opportun learning opportunities that you would like to see addressed at the project directors meeting in May, um, as well as topics that you want to learn about um, and discuss with your peers, whether it's in our quarterly talking circle sessions here um, or possibly at the project directors meeting in, in May. So maybe let's take those first two those first two um, questions right there. What would you like to see addressed? Ah, conflict management, I see that. Yes, please feel free to chime in verbally or type something into the chat. So I'm just thinking of sustainability. Um, so, you know, the grant runs out in another year and we, we are moving along with some of our other projects and we do have some other grants and the school is going to be a nice um, way to continue a lot of the activities that we're doing is, you know, in connection with the TEA. So, you know, that's going to be helpful. But, you know, funding is tight for schools, funding is tight in some of these areas. So just just thinking about sustainability for a lot of these programs that we're developing and, and relationships that we're developing in, over the long term, that would be a something that's on in the back of my mind, which will be moving to the forward of my mind as we come to the end of this grant cycle. Sure. So I'm hearing kind of two strands in within there, Carl. Tell me if this resonates that the the funding being one one part of the sustainability but also the those the sustainability of the relationships the partnerships the practices the programs that are established to um keep those right. going maybe the the non-fiduciary pieces of that yes yep and just the sustainability of the tea um you know just the funding for the tea and i think that you know, the the tribe definitely sees the value in it and the tribal members do. And so it's going to be a priority for the tribe. I, I don't doubt that. But, you know, the pie, the piece of the pie gets a little bit smaller uh, and it gets spread more thin. Understood. All right, conflict management, sustainability, what else? And feel free to jump off of any ideas that um, or topics that we've talked about today here too. Tracy, I'm trying to figure the, the, the term for this. I, in a structure where you want to plan for the future of your organization and the future, like you, you want to train people up through it. I want teachers to become teachers, then become administrators, become leaders. What is the term for that? How to, uh... I don't know if it's, if it's succession, like planning for a succession or planning for, but it sounds like you like growing leadership capacity or yes, um, like how to how to in, how to grow your own leaders. <laughs> how to how do we grow our own school leader? Like I have a grow your own administrator program where I'm growing teachers into administrators, and how do we grow our children into teachers? How do we, you know, grow our, grow, how do we set this up to grow capacity building, career advancement? I, I don't, I'm not, yes, all those words. I'm trying to formulate it into a sentence and I can't. I'm, that's why I'm struggling to try and give you a topic. It's, it's all right in that idea. Yeah, Carl's offering a few, a few terms in there, career advancement, or it sounds like it's not exactly a pathway that you're describing, but but something towards a bigger goal of growing the community, the community capacity. 
I guess, I guess that's, I, I guess, I, I mean, I, we have that cradle to career concept, right? That's the whole, we're trying to make sure that we've got everything from early childhood succession planning. Beth nailed it. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. <sighs> Got it. What else? <laughs> we do, we are, I know it sounds like a, it's a, a ways away yet. Um, May will be our, our project directors meeting. It's, um, you know, Project directors from all the OIE um, discretionary grants are required required to attend. So it's really an opportunity to connect and hear from each other. Um, it will be a virtual uh, conference this year, uh, like we did like we did last year. Um, so so I know it feels like I said I know it feels like a ways away, but we're planning for it. So. Um, we're starting to pull together topic ideas, um, ways to to connect and highlight, um, connect you with each other and, and highlight the work that, that you're doing. So, um, Carl, yes, you're getting at my last you know, my last questions there. Thinking about what supports your learning in a virtual environment, like even for these sessions, even for these sessions here, I know we're only meeting quarterly um, in this in this year, but but what will what will support your learning? What kinds of how do you like to interact? We're all doing so much of this. I know as much as we want to be in person, I do I I do too. Um, but what what supports your engagement and participation in this kind of learning environment? Something interactive. Are there specific ways you like to interact, or maybe you had an experience that was just really cool and it worked really well for you? Sharing models. Can you say a little bit more about that, Carl? Models shared. Yeah, um, I in the when we were developing basically um, agreements, collaborative agreements with the school district, and just being able to see what those look like, um, even some sharing of curriculum models that folks are using for integrating cultural activities into academic, you know, into math and reading and that sort of thing. Just have the ability to interact, but then also to be folks to be able to share, either share their screen and share some of the things that they're working on or um, somehow be able to see some of the models. It's, you hear about them and they're awesome to hear about, but it'd just be nice to be able to see some of them. And of course I like to beg, borrow and steal things. So that makes it easier if I could see them. Um, so, you know, I just, you know, it's more interactive. And and so if, if, if we're meeting and sharing about our programs, it'd be nice to see some of the documents that are being created and how those relationships with the districts and other partners are put on paper. Particular topic areas, I, I jotted down here my notes, like curriculum models or approaches to incorporating um, cultural, um, I don't know, I'm struggling with the phrase, um, culturally responsive, just culturally responsive content or approaches, mm -hmm. um, as well as collaborative agreements. Yeah, work-based learning is one of the things that I'm interested in seeing, like working out the nuts and bolts of um, pre-apprenticeship or that mm. sort of thing. Thank you. What else? Talia or Cameron or... Lisa, Ken, anything, Kara? A 
Okay. Well, um, if you think of anything, um, you are always um, welcome to email one of us on the on the TA team or reach out um, if you have thoughts or suggestions, or um, if you want to hear more from a colleague that you um, from your step grant grantee um, colleagues. Or I know several of you operate multiple OIE um, grants. Maybe you. Um, caught wind of something in another talking circle and you'd like to hear hear more about that, let us let us know. Um, and we'll definitely um, collect that information and take it in consideration as we start planning out our um, project directors meetings and topics. And as we plan uh, for these continuing talking circle sessions as well. I appreciate all, all of your thoughts there. Um, any, any questions about anything that we've talked about or we didn't have any, um, um, big OIE updates to share today, but I just want to give you an opportunity if you had any questions that you're hoping to get answered today, uh, that you have the opportunity to lift those up. And if not, I will lift up some specific dates for you. Um, if you don't have these on your calendar, you might want to uh, just mark your calendar so you know that they're coming up. Uh, we, as we know, we're doing quarterly talking circles this year, so we will see you uh, for the next one in April, and then after that, it'll be August. Um, we do, we are maintaining our monthly office hours, and the next opportunity that you can drop in on those will be January 16th. They're at the standing, standing time, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time. Um, typically, the fourth Thursday of the month, sometimes we adjust those, so, you know, for working around holidays and that sort of thing. But just a reminder that those are those are those drop in office hours. Usually we have um, the full OIE um, program officer team on hand to respond to any questions. Um, they're very informal. You can drop in for a minute. You can stay the whole hour. It's totally up to you um, to use um, as you as you need. And then, of course, I've been talking about the project directors meeting that will be virtual this year. We have dates, um, May 10th through 12th, um, so you can kind of block that off. You know that those will be happening. We'll, be, we'll follow up in the months to come with more specific dates, uh, or excuse me, more specific times, uh, so that you know when, when that will be taking place. Um, we're going to put up our end of session poll here for you today. We've got our standard questions. We really hope that you'll take a minute before you sign off today to answer this very brief feedback survey. Um, we do take a look at this and, and take all of your feedback into consideration. So we really value that input. You should see that popping up on, on your screen. If, it's, if you don't see it, it might be hiding behind something. You might have to move, move some things around. But um, feel free to respond to that. Um, while I take us to the last slide here, um, just a reminder, um, if you are needing to get a hold of your TA team, your technical assistance team, um, uh, you've noticed that um, Ms. Sarah Brightwell is still out of the office. So if, you're, if you email her directly, you won't get a reply until, until the middle of next month. That, um, please instead oh, email um, the technical assistance team using that OIE at sceservices.com message. That way you're sure to get a response from someone on the technical assistance team. Um, and then of course, um, you have your discretionary group lead uh, with OIE as well as your program officer for the STEP program, Shala Ortega. Um, as always a request, if you are emailing those folks, it's really super helpful to get a timely response if you include your grantee name and the PR number in there, and that helps ensure that that all gets tracked and followed up on in a timely manner. And if you're not following us on Twitter, um, please do please do look us up. We're at OIE Indian ED on there. So give us a look. And meanwhile, we'll be looking out for, for some of those, those websites to, to come live and um, Thank you everybody for taking time out to, to meet today. It was really great to see all of you here today. I hope to see you back again um, in April, if not before. <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thanks, Lisa.